All right. Hey, everybody. Well, this is Chief Meteorologist Mike Everett in the King 5 Newsroom, and uh, we have an active night tonight with first alert weather and a really strong storm that's off the coast. And so what I figured we'd do tonight is just take a minute and kind of just nerd out a little bit. You know, I only have about two to three minutes on air to talk about these kind of things. But of course, everybody has a lot of questions. Everybody's been talking about the bomb cyclone, bomb ge bomba genesis. Is that real? And if it is, what does it mean? Um, a lot about the gusty winds, a lot of questions about why the wind is coming from where it's coming from and most importantly when will it peak when will it calm down and what can we do to stay safe so uh, I've taken a few questions already and I've kind of worked them into a little presentation here so let's see if I can switch it over to the weather computer here and walk you through what we've got going on so first alert weather for sure we'll be in first alert overnight tonight through the morning on Wednesday a couple things that you notice here is first of all temperatures not really going anywhere we're talking about mid 40s and lower 50s upper 30s a couple of nights here it's already chilly and of course that's pretty much on brand with the Pacific Northwest <clears throat> Excuse me, and what we expect this time of year. So let's dig into this. First of all, the details of the first alert. Blustery winds. We've already seen some gusts tonight in excess of 50 miles an hour, including in the Seattle metro. We have multiple power outages. At last check, over 50,000 customers without power in some spots, and that's going to be a thing through the rest of the night tonight. Another thing that we don't really factor into it is the possibility of some difficult travel. So not only in the mountains where there are blizzard warnings in effect, I'll walk you through that coming up in a moment, but even in a lot of the back roads, a lot of the communities, anywhere where there's trees they could potentially be coming down tonight so if you can avoid traveling on this Tuesday night and remember that the Wednesday morning commute is probably going to be pretty rough as well those are a couple of important things to keep top of mind blizzard warning in effect that is currently happening in the mountains whiteout conditions expected in both Stevens and Snoqualmie Pass through the night tonight again if you can avoid mountain travel do it and there's a possibility that WashDOT just may end up closing interstate 90 also on top of that we've got king tides adding to the fun so that has been affecting some ferry crossings as if Puget Sound and the lakes and the oceans aren't rough enough. And near the shore, we've got some big waves. In fact, in the surf zone, it's about 20 to 24 feet there. So we're tracking some coastal erosion, and that's going to be something that we'll continue to track through the rest of the night. So as we move forward here, let's get into some of the details. First of all, the winds really haven't played out the way that we expected in places like North Bend. So far, the biggest gust we've seen there is about 30 miles an hour. But in the Seattle metro, we've seen a gust over 50, and that's not out some power in some spots close to 50 in Everett and then look at that purple swath in Port Angeles to Hoquiam across the Olympics it's been howling tonight some of those winds in excess of 40 50 and even 60 miles an hour there and more to come as we go through the night so putting things into motion here high wind warning everything you see in that ugly yellow mustard color not only along the coast but in some of the foothills it's going to be in effect until 4 a.m. on Wednesday and coming up in just a moment we'll talk about some of the mechanics behind why the foothills and not all the areas in between the areas in between actually have a lot of wind as well wind advisories in place where we've seen gusts in excess of 50 miles an hour already that'll be in place until 4 a.m. on Wednesday and that's going to be across the lowlands 20 to 30 mile an hour sustained winds will be a thing pretty much through the night and the day tomorrow. A rare blizzard warning. Now we had one earlier this year at the tail end of last winter, but we don't see these very often. In fact, it had been over a decade before we'd seen the previous one there. So basically what National Weather Service and me and anybody who will tell you is what we want to communicate is that difficult to impossible travel conditions through both Snoqualmie and Stevens Pass through the night tonight and down towards White Pass as well. Give it till tomorrow morning. Conditions will improve dramatically and I'll walk you through that coming up in a moment here too. Now if you do head to the eastern side of the Cascades, well it's not Nirvana there either. We've got a winter storm warning in effect waiting for you. Remember a winter storm warning is nothing to laugh at either and that's in Kittitas, Klickitat and Yakima counties till 10 a.m. on Wednesday where we've been seeing steady snow making its way through through the region and then the high surf advisory along the immediate coast here we're again in the surf zone. We've been seeing waves about 20 to 24 feet. Shore erosion for sure. And we carried a story on King 5 yesterday where there was a lady who was walking near the immediate coast and she got caught up by a sneaker wave and miraculously survived. But it was looking pretty sketchy there and pretty touch and go. So what we're telling people 
is not only will there be coastal flooding possibility in places like uh, off towards Westport, but stay away from the immediate shoreline because again, every once in a while, those big waves can come in. You're no match for water. So just be very careful there. So high surf advisory will be in effect through the day tomorrow. So let's talk about this storm system. This thing really has some intentions for the West Coast. What you'll notice, first of all, is that the moisture plume is pointed towards the south. So it looks like Northern California and Oregon are really going to take the bulk of the rain. And yes, that is an atmospheric river. What's remarkable about this is the snow it's going to throw down in the Cascades and in the Sierras and up towards the coastal ranges, the Monashies, up into British Columbia as well. But this storm system doesn't come on shore for a few days. It just sits and tumbles out there. So it's going to continue to just drive rain into Northern California and Oregon and keep on doing so. Now, finally, on Friday, it will kind of move past us and make its way on shore, which will bring another round of rain and mountain snow and cooler temperatures along with it. And it's going to continue to just sit there and meander until it finally just dissipates early next week. So this is a really remarkable storm system. So one of the questions that we've got already, in fact, I've been hearing it from a lot of people. I've been seeing it online as well. Is like a bomb cyclone. Really? Okay. Are you guys just making this up to just sell TV time? And the answer is no. This is a term that was established in the late 90s. And I don't know where the bomb part of it comes from. I looked up the etymology yesterday trying to see if there was a Greek word that equated to bomb, and it doesn't. That, that's, that part is kind of superlative. But Genesis is a, storm, or a term that we use from the Bible, right? Genesis is the birth or the growth of something. So when you take the birth and the growth of something and then you add bomb to it, that's basically a big growth. It's a major growth that happens in a really short period of time. So the way that we define it is as such. Take a look at this. What bombogenesis is when a storm intensifies by at least 24 millibars in 24 hours. So what we're trying to say in a big nerdy way here is that this storm is strengthening quickly. It went from just being your standard low pressure system to a very powerful low pressure system. In fact, if you think that it resembles a hurricane, you're right. Because a hurricane is basically a low pressure system. It's just that this one is not driven by warm water. What it is is basically the difference between cold and warm. So if you think about it, this system originated way up north towards Alaska and the Aleutians. And as it moves over, (coughs) excuse me, the warm water, the warm, even though the water is about 50 degrees, it's relatively warm compared to the storm. So when you get really cold and really warm and those two start mixing it up, that's when it happens, that's when rapid intensification happens. Then you add the jet stream, those upper level winds that kind of deliver weather to you, that kind of stirs it up even more. And the jet stream is pretty much right overhead right now. So that's one of the things that's really kind of just winding this storm up. By the way, this storm system really intensified very quickly and not went way past 24 millibars. In fact, this time yesterday was at about 990 millibars. Now it's at about 950. So some quick math telling you that this thing intensified more or less 40 millibars in about 24 hours. So yeah, this thing rapidly intensified and most definitely qualifies as a bomb cyclone. So here's what we're looking at as far as the details go. The low sits off the coast there and a lot of people have been wondering, well, okay, if this thing's off towards our west, why are the winds coming in from the east? Well, the reason is, and I'm telling you all the time, is that flow around a low is counterclockwise. So what you see is that it's pulling air, especially from eastern Washington, into the system. And so as it does that, not only does it create that southerly flow along the coast that's really kicking up those waves, but you notice off towards the eastern portion of the state, that air is being pulled almost like a vacuum towards the low. So as it goes up and over the mountains, that's why we see those winds continue to intensify. Now, the other part of that equation, too, is people always wonder, well, why do we have this wind warning in the foothills of all places? I understand that it would be along the coast and, that, you know, obviously in the mountains. Well, the reason is, is that as it goes up and over the mountains like that, it basically works with gravity. It has to work going up over the Cascades. But then as it comes down the backside of this, the mountains, gravity basically just allows it to pick up speed as it's going downhill. So that downsloping makes it so that... A lot of the foothill communities, places like North Bend, Renton, Issaquah, the Issaquah Highlands, and even up towards Snohomish County, 
you see the gustiest winds. By the time they get to Puget Sound, they've had a chance to kind of mellow out a little bit because there's relative flat land between the foothills and Puget Sound. So that's why you see the gustiest winds in some of the foothill communities, and we will continue to as we go through the night. So with that said, we've got these easterly winds. Why do we have big waves along the coast if the flow is offshore? Well, basically, this thing is a very powerful system. And what happens with low pressure systems is it drives air downward and so as it does that it kind of creates this push so think about it as air comes downward and it hits the surface of the ocean it spreads those waves outward and so again we're seeing really high surf 20 24 feet in the surf zone and then you add those strong southerly winds as we just saw a moment ago and it's really just churning up the ocean out there. So you've got king tides where they're already elevated, and now you've got all this storm surge and flow there. Again, I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's some new beach erosion along the immediate coast tomorrow. Moving forward here, here's a live look from Stoquamie Summit. And excuse me while I take a drink if there was any question that we're doing this live. We're doing this live. So this is the frontage road, and we've got one of our cameras turned around so that it's not on Interstate 90, but right there, this is basically where the Chevron station is. And so what I use this camera for is to see if the snow is actually falling and sticking, and it's most definitely sticking. Take a look at that floodlight in the foreground there, where it's snowing and it's blowing snow, and it's going to continue to do that through the rest of the night. The other observation that I make there, you don't see a lot of people up there right now. They're just basically trying to keep people out of the area, and that's a good thing. You don't want to be up there until tomorrow. Now, with that said, we're going to see blizzard conditions through the night tonight, but tomorrow the snow will stop. It's going to remain cold, and that'll give the folks at Washdot an opportunity to get out and clean up those roads a little bit. And then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're going to continue to see that snow resume, but just not as intense as it is tonight. Speaking of intense, here's another camera I've been nerding out on for the better part of the last 48 hours. This is one of the resorts up at the summit at Snoqualmie. This is Silver Fir. And what you can see is if you just watch this for a little bit, a couple of the observations there is, first of all, there's some stacking snow on top of those picnic tables. I'd say that's easily about six to eight inches deep. You can see it on top of the trash cans. And then every once in a while, you'll see a gust come through that'll just kind of take some of that snow off the roof and just kind of swirl it around. So even though it looks like a bit of a winter wonderland, it's blustery, it's cold. And again, you don't want any part of that to tonight. So take a look at current radar. Here's what's going on. And again, this is Tuesday night, right about quarter after eight. And you're seeing a very well-defined rain snow line. And it's basically right about where the foothills are. Now, with that easterly flow, it does push a lot of cold air through the mountain passes. So sometimes when the snow level says 2,500, it can be a lot lower. In fact, it snowed in a lot of the foothill communities last night down to about 800 feet. So again, snow is definitely a thing in the mountains, but it could be in some of the foothills overnight tonight as well and it's going to continue to roll through through most of the night. Rain really isn't the big story with this system. And again, as we saw earlier, the buckle, bulk of that will be way down towards the south in Oregon and Northern California, where they're pretty much taking that atmospheric river right on the head. But again, building some fantastic snowpack up into the southern portion of the Cascades and into the Sierras. So a couple things here. I'm going to show you a wind profile. And you've heard me say this a bunch of times on air, is that it's not about the numbers. Look at the colors. So we're Wherever you see those purples is where you're going to see those most intense winds. So let's put that into motion and see where those most intense winds will be. Again, across the region, especially in the foothills, right around 1030 tonight, still very gusty in the mountains, the foothills, Puget Sound, I-5 corridor. That's where you'll see those winds continue to stay in excess of 40 miles an hour. Around 2 a.m., you notice that the footprint starts to shrink a little bit, but even still, intense winds expected, especially in the foothills of King County, Pierce, not so much along the coast. It's still purple there. And it's finally around 6.30 in the morning that we start to see those winds go from gusty to breezy, at least in King County and along Puget Sound. You notice along the coast, uh, out towards um, the Olympics. And what you'll notice, too, is just to the north of Port Angeles there in the Admiralty Inlet, it stays purple pretty much throughout the entire day. It's going to remain gusty. It doesn't really back off until late on Wednesday night when all of us will get a chance to kind of just slow down a little bit. So we already talked about this past potential blizzard conditions tonight. Snow stops but remains cold on Wednesday, and then light snow will resume again on Wednesday. As far as snow potential goes, uh, this is just huge and fantastic news for the resorts. So 
A couple of things. Uh, Mount Baker announced that they're going to have Pass Holders Day tomorrow, and then they're going to open to the general public on Thursday. But a lot of the resorts now just kind of jumping in behind it. I believe Crystal's announced some opening dates as well. You remember, you want to remember, and I've learned this the hard way, that they're early season conditions. So if you're thinking about skiing or snowboarding, even though there's some fresh new snow up there, there's still a lot of rocks and logs waiting for you as well. So if you're taking your brand new skis and your snowboard up there, don't do it. And also, just remember, Wait till conditions improve tomorrow or Thursday or into the weekend before you head up there and make sure you got your game on as far as the car is prepped, the tires are in good shape, you've got traction tires, you've got chains if they're required, that you've got all the supplies that you need in there. You don't want to be going up and doing a test run <laughs> and then finding out that you don't have everything that you hoped you had. Taking a look at snow potential overnight tonight, between now and about 10 a.m., we're talking about half a foot at Snoqualmie Pass and at Stevens Pass. Now remember, there is already a lot of snow on the ground at Stevens. And then Baker, again, this is Mount Baker proper, not the ski resort. It's going to pick up close to two feet. And White Pass is going to do very well. Crystal's going to do very well. Mission Ridge is really the sleeper here. There's going to be some fantastic dry snow there. And hopefully they'll be able to open by the time we get to the weekend or at least soon. And of course on King 5, we'll let you know as soon as we get some updates there. Hurricane Ridge is also picking up some big snow. So so as far as the seven day snow level goes, it's kind of a perfect pyramid. Again, 2,500 feet on Tuesday, possibly lower than that as we continue to see those winds pushing in from the east. Then becomes about pass level Wednesday and Thursday. So again, it should be pretty easy for making your way through Snoqualmie Pass. Friday warms up a little bit again as that system tumbles through. And then Saturday, Sunday, Monday, back down we go. In fact, it's going to get below pass level again Sunday into Monday. So putting everything into motion here, we go overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. You notice the snow is pretty much a constant all throughout the night. The rain will shadow pretty much over portions of Pierce and King County. This is right after midnight. Some heavy rain across the southwest interior and then right around three o'clock in the morning we'll see some of that rain become a little more steady in the foothills. Still snowing hard in the mountains and possibly even look at that a little bit of low level snow similar to what we saw last night up towards where would that be up towards uh, Port Angeles, Clallam County. Look at that. Yeah, right along the foothills of the Olympics. Definitely possible there. And then we go to around 7.30 on Wednesday and uh, the snow finally lets up. So again, that's one of the things that we were talking about is that again throughout the night tonight wind driven snow so even though it doesn't pile up a whole lot it's the visibility that's going to be a problem there if you can only see about 10 feet in front of your hood you just don't want any part of that wait until wednesday conditions will dram dramatically improve in fact it looks like they'll stay pretty good as we go through the day going into wednesday temperatures remain cool they're going to be 50 by day 40 by night and we'll continue to just see some bands of rain that will pass through now we're not completely out of the woods yet you notice those oranges and yellow along the immediate coast, some bands of rain will continue to push through and do something very similar to what we saw with the last storm system. They're going to hug the eastern side of the Olympics and drop some heavy rain over top of the Kitsap Peninsula. So you remember places like Brennan, we had the Duckabush River that flooded just a couple days ago. I don't expect any flood activity because it's not going to be constant, but man, is it going to rain hard there. So if you're thinking, oh, we're done with this system, no, no, we are not. Wednesday afternoon, we see some more rain that moves through here that could be unstable could fire off a little bit of thunder and lightning out of the deal Wednesday night we see another band making its way through but what you notice is again things should stay pretty quiet in the passes finally late on Thursday morning right around 10 a.m. We see another band of that rain and some mountain snow that will swing through. But again, we don't expect that to have any dramatic impacts until we get to Friday. And then finally, that's when that system tumbles through and another round of mountain snow comes in. And we'll probably have some watches and warnings associated with that. And finally, look at the upper left-hand corner of your screen there. That's finally when this system just gets done tumbling around the west coast, makes its way on shore up towards Vancouver Island. So before I let you go here, just one more thing. We'll just walk through winds again. This time with some numbers on it. You see those purples, you know, that's where those gusts will be in excess of 40. But you also notice that right around 2, 3 a.m., that's when the, the intensity dies down. So again, that's when we kind of expect crews to be able to get out, get some power back on for folks. And that wind will stay gusty up towards Whidbey Island, Admiralty Inlet, and even along the coast, you're still seeing some purples there. But for the most part, the wind event will be done by the time we get early into Wednesday morning. So there you have it. In a nutshell, we will stay in first alert until early on 
Wednesday morning, and then we're just going to stay kind of in an active pattern. Again, bands of heavy rain will continue to push through, but for the most part, this system should stop battering us right in the middle of the night, Tuesday into Wednesday. Hope you're staying warm. Hope you're staying safe, and we really appreciate joining us on this special edition of some King 5 weather on king5.com and our YouTube channel. Stay safe, stay warm, and keep it tuned here. We'll keep you ahead of the storms.